South Africa, a nation of many cultures. The city of Peter Maritzburg has 950,000 inhabitants and is once again host to the first round of the 2011 UCI Mountain Bike World Cup presented by Shimano. Located just one hour from the Indian Ocean, not only the local surfers know how to have fun here. The riders from the Santa Cruz Syndicate team are also enjoying a little bit of time off. On the day of his race, we met up with World Cup champion Jared Graves for breakfast at Team Yeti's impressive South African Lodge. We heard some exciting news about the Four Cross legend. Yeah, this is my last full year doing Four Cross. Um, I'll probably do some more races, but next year I'm going to focus on, on the downhill again, and that's where sort of my training and everything will be based around. You know, I've achieved all I sort of wanted to in Four Cross. I've, I've won all the big races and and I just want to uh, achieve some goals in downhill that I, that I never did when I was younger, when I was racing all the time. So, like at the moment, I've, I've no endurance for downhill. You know, I can't I can't last five minutes. So, this year, four cross is the priority, and next year, downhill. And what are Jared's goals for this season? Same as always, sort of win win the World Cup overall, win the World Champs. There is another rider who thinks four cross is not enough anymore. Annika Beerton trained all winter to prepare herself mentally and, as we can see physically, for a new mountain bike discipline. Yeah, this year I got a whole new challenge for myself. I will be uh, racing cross country uh, next to Four Cross. Um, so I've been racing uh, the Four Cross World Cups, World Cups for such a long time, and uh, you know I won, I think, 14 uh, World Cups. Uh, I'm 28 now, so I think it's uh, it's a good time to change the cross country and uh, yeah, try and see uh, how far I can get in that discipline. And how does the Dutch rider like this four cross track? Yeah, I really like it. It's a good course. It's really fast and uh, it's a different kind of skill that you need uh, technical wise. It's uh, it's fast, but also has some uh, challenging jumps in it and stuff. So um, yeah, it suits me. I, I, I won here two years ago and I hope I can, uh, you know, put another one to that list, so we'll see. Together with French rider Celine Gros, she made it to the finals, so let's see which two girls will join them. Lucia Ochin, Fionn Griffiths, Katie Kurd, and Anita Molchik in the blocks in the top two from this heat here. Semi-final number two will advance to the final with Celine Gros and Anita Birken. And here we go. They are on course, and right away, it is Anita Molchik, current World Cup champion, first out the gate and getting the lead. Kurt is second, Griffith bringing down third. Oh, but there's a crash. She goes over the jump and she slips in the corner going down. So Kurt crashes right into her and there is a bit of carnage there as they go over the big bridge coming down towards the end. This race is a little bit, I don't know, you could say kind of slow. So it's Griffiths and Kurt in front right now. Molchik closing in on Katie Kurd. Look at her, she's trying hard to get into second position. That is a key position. The top two riders move on. The Austrian rider can't quite overtake Ochin, so it is Griffiths and Ochin moving to the final. Check out this crash one more time. Wow, she just really lost the front wheel coming off of that jump into that corner. All right, here we go with the final heat. Lucia Ochin, Celine Gro, Fionn Griffiths, and Annika Birten. And they are on course, and of course, Beerton gets the whole shot out of the gate quick. She is so strong on those pulls. Griffiths going on the inside line, getting into second place pretty strong. And there's that super sketchy corner that we saw earlier. The track is very, very dry right now, so it's super slippery. It's like riding on marbles going around the corners. And this is all Annika Beerton coming across the finish line. The Dutch rider takes this one by a mile. Fionn Griffiths coming in second. So the podium for the women's four cross is Bearden first, Griffith second, and Gro third. But today, as soon as racing started, it, it got slippery as well. So we really had to uh, think what lines to pick. And uh, But yeah, racing just went well, just like I planned. And 
Awesome to uh, kick off with a win. All right, we move on to men's quarterfinal action. This is heat number four in the quarterfinals. We've got Scott Beaumont, Michael Marosi, Johannes Fishback, and Thomas Slavic. Thomas Slavic, the current world champion, going up against a very strong gate here. Fishback getting the whole shot, going on the outside, takes a big amount of speed around the outside corner. Good through the rhythm section here. Slavic right on Fishback's tail, though, and oh, he goes down in the corner. The world champ goes down, and this one is all Fishback. Morosi taking second place. I just uh, missed the gate with uh, Fischbach, so I was just going right behind him, maybe too much behind his rear wheel, and I didn't uh, didn't see the rut before the downhill section was well, pretty slippery. So I just hit it with my rear wheel, and then I just crashed. Men's semifinal heat number one. We've got Kamil Tatarkovic in there with Michael Prokop, David Graf, and Jared Graves. Jared Graves, an absolute monster as he comes out of the gate with the whole shot. Super fast on the inside line, cuts hard to the outside, and uses that bank turn to generate some good speed into the rhythm section. Graves out in front, followed by Prokop, then Graf. Uh, and there's pretty much no chance for the other two riders to catch up to these guys. Graves way, way out in front with Prokop, not too far behind. And Graves will stay in front to cross the finish line. He can pretty much take it easy now. He knows nobody can take his final spot. And he's just going to roll across that finish line. So it's going to go to Graves and Prokop who move on to the final. Semi-final number two in the gate with Michael Marosi, Joost Wickman, Johannes Fischbach and Roger Rinderknecht. Fischbach had a wicked start in his quarterfinal to make it here and we are on course with Fischbach again taking the whole shot and the outside line. That is really working well for him. Through the rhythm section, Marosi moves into second place. So it is Fischbach and Marosi. Oh, and in third place, Rinderknecht goes down in that really slippery corner. He drops back down to fourth place and right now it is Rinderknecht. But look at this. Morosi putting the hammer down, trying to attack Fishback, and he will take first place in this heat with Fishback second. It doesn't matter. They're both moving to the final. All right, the men's final heat. Michael Morosi from the Czech Republic in with a four-cross legend. Also from the Czech Republic, Michael Prokop. Johannes Fishback, who broke his collarbone 11 weeks ago, is in the final. And Jared Graves, of course, the current World Cup champion. And again, Graves with a huge hole shot. And the lead going into the rhythm section. Michael Prokop taking the inside line, getting in there right behind him. Fishbach sitting back in third as they come to that really treacherous corner. Fishbach trying to get an inside line there, but he doesn't quite manage to squeak through. Jared Graves still well out in front. Prokop holding strong onto that second position. And Fishbach in third place, hammering hard to try and catch up to the leading pair. And look at this, Morosi making a charge on Fishbach, trying to catch up. Graves still way out in front. He only Owns this one. Pro couple takes second place. Fishbox squeaking in third and Morosi fourth. Start wasn't wasn't the best. I hit the gate a little bit on the way down, a bit anxious to get going. But apart from that, I got the power down and just rode a nice clean lap. I, I was knew the places where guys were trying some passing moves. I was careful to to really come into those sections fast to not give them any chance to get past me. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. Graves wins his first World Cup in 2011, followed by Prokop, Fischbach, Morosi, and Graf, and that puts a smile on Jared's face. Back at the event area, brand new Team GR is ready to take over women's mountain biking. The members, 2009 downhill world champion Emmeline Rago, and a living legend of four cross, Fionn Griffiths. And no team would be complete without their mechanic, and this one is Ben Harrison. 2011 now, we started Team GR this year. Um, new bikes, intense bikes, uh, and Emmeline and I always ride together anyway on the downhill track and, and four cross when she does that as well. So just made sense really, and we're, we're both kind of up there in the results. So um, yeah, just wanted to put it together. We knew we'd be quite strong together as long as we both had good seasons. So uh, just go to bat against uh, some of the really big teams. So. It was like a bus, I think. We just like, yeah, like looking for sponsoring and everything. And uh, we just like think it was a good idea to do the team together and like just have a strong team and like good ride on it. And so, yeah. Right now, we're not really planning to expand at all. Um, it's, it's simple with three people traveling around all over the place. Uh, but beyond that, it gets, uh, gets a little bit difficult. And we're doing all the planning and preparations ourselves. It's, uh, 
it, we just want to be able to focus on riding and, and getting good results, really. Well, she's going to be looking to make a big impact on this track, going for the downhill situation. Fionn Griffiths determined to get some good results on a very dried out course here in Peter Maritzburg. And wow, look at this. She's already five seconds faster than the current hot seat, Siegenthaler. Good course for her. Her four cross skills, the jumping skills really paying off. As she comes across the finish line, let's see the last sprint to the line. And she is a good six plus seconds faster, pushing Siegenthaler out of the hot seat. We have a new leader. The defending World Cup champion, French rider Sabrina Jonier now on course. She is not known for her good qualifying runs. However, in the final, she always turns it on, carrying some good speed through the middle section here. She's a very ambitious rider and always determined to win. She does not take losing very well. Coming towards the last corner of the race here, in towards the finish line. It's going to be close, but it's not quite fast enough, and Griffiths stays on the hot seat and that'll be the first time in 10 years that Griffiths has beat John Ye. and here we go next up we have Fionn's teammate French rider Emeline Rago who was second last year in the World Cup overall she's riding with a broken ankle if you can believe that and she is looking very good here big jumps very styly for the young French woman man she is just rocketing those jumps considering she's got a broken ankle that says a lot about her determination here Emmeline Rago looking very good on course as she comes down through the last section. She is on top of the pedals. Is she going to take over the top spot? No, she will not either. Fionn Griffiths maintains the current leader position and the hot seat. All right, the last woman in this race is at the starting gate, the 2010 world champion riding for the Trek Global Racing Team and the fastest qualifier here in Peter Maritzburg, and she is on track. Tracy Mosley from Great Britain, one of the fastest ladies on two wheels. And she is always a strong contender. Coming towards the tabletops, not quite cleaning the jumps. Here she comes towards this bridge drop-in and the rock garden. Looking good through here though, very, very strong, super stable on the bike, wearing that rainbow jersey of the current world champ. She was eighth fastest in the flat section, which is a lot of pedaling for these ladies, but she's done really well here. And look at this, at the split time, she's already improved on her time. She is five hundredths of a second faster than Fionn Griffiths here. She must be absolutely spent though. This is a long, long course, pedaling for nearly five minutes from top to bottom as she takes the last sprint to the finish line, and she's done it. Two, eight, eight hundredths of a second faster than Fionn Griffiths. Tracy Mosley is the winner. Oh, it's, this is certainly the toughest track and even coming back two years later it's got longer. Even though it's dry today it's still so much pedaling and I really tried to give it a lot in the pedaling and then felt like I suffered all this down this last section of the forecross. I was just hanging on for dear life. So yeah, it's tough, tough race but it's such an awesome start. It's been years to try and get this jersey and it feels amazing getting to ride in it. And to get riding it to the first win of the year is a pretty special moment. So the biggest pair of glasses on this series on the downhill podium, Tracy Mosley wins it, Griffiths gets second, and Rago third, Jonier fourth, and Pugan fifth as we move on to the men's side of things. <laughs> Now it's time for local hero Greg Minar to shine. The South African calls Peter Maritzburg his hometown and won the World Cup here two years ago. Giving away prizes at the Santa Cruz Syndicate Team Tent Lottery makes him even more popular. It's been really good. We've run the fan club again. We had a lot of support from the locals. And Marlino, we had just won the new Harbour 29 um, Santa Cruz Carbon Bike. So good win for her today. Hopefully we can have a win tomorrow. Winning is what everyone expects of him. You know, the locals don't really understand the whole World Cup thing, that it's a series. They think this is the world champs coming into town and they expect me to win. I uh, won there the first year, so now it's, uh, to them it's a no-brainer. If you don't once, you can do it again. Will the local star be able to do it again? Greg's competitors are ready, determined to win, but his biggest rival, World Cup winner G. Atherton, feels a bit uneasy. Yeah, I, I think parts of the course suit me. You know, it's hard to say if it's gonna, if like it's gonna suit me. Though. Well, that didn't sound very convincing, G. 
One man who does want to convince everyone is Four Cross World Cup winner Jared Graves. Right now, 1.18 seconds faster than the current hot seat, but this is not like the sprints that he's used to in Four Cross. This is a marathon in comparison, so he really needs to work on his endurance. However, the jumps are looking good, so that Four Cross experience really playing a key here. And he comes across with two seconds advantage. He takes over the hot seat. Probably could have tried, like, pin it a bit more up top, but trying to save energy as much as I could. And just, uh, yeah, I don't know, it was, just, it was all a bit of a blur because it was just so painful all the way down. Well, someone who knows a lot about pain is New Zealand rider Cameron Cole making his comeback today. In Champry, I broke my scaphoid and um, went back to the hospital and uh, just down the road from Champry, had an x-ray and then the doctor cleaned out the cut from the scaphoid and told me I had a broken scaphoid and then I went home to New Zealand. Yeah, I feel pretty good. I missed a bit of training um, after the earthquake in Christchurch. I uh, couldn't uh, ride the tracks, they were closed for a little while, the mountain bike tracks. Now at this stage I'm fully recovered and looking forward to the 2011 World Cup season um, and especially getting to Europe later on. And here we see Cameron on course right now, looking pretty smooth through the rock garden there, but he is more than half a second back of Jared Graves at the moment. He's going to need to pick up the pace, so it could be that he's not in top shape yet on the season. Getting on the pedals, he hasn't sat down, so his fitness level is probably there. He just needs to pick up on the timing on the bike a little bit. The last sprint to the finish line, not going to do it here. Oh, my mistake. He is faster by, oh, four, seven hundredths of a second. Incredible comeback from Cameron Cole. All right, the World Cup legend Steve Pete from Great Britain next on track. This guy knows this course. He knows biking. He is the granddaddy caddy of mountain bike downhill. He was the fastest on the first split, but can he keep up the speed here? He struggled at the start of the World Cup season last year, but it looks promising for him this year here. And look at that, he's already a second faster than Cameron Cole, who is sitting on the hot seat at the moment. Steve Pete has got tons of experience, so this man, if anybody can do it from the back door, he can. Petey actually riding with a bit of a chest infection today, so that will really take a toll, especially because this course requires such endurance. Ooh, a bit of an ugly landing there, but Pete comes across, minus 1.693 seconds. Uh, I had a pretty good run, track dried out so much, like yesterday afternoon and this morning, so it was rolling really fast, so it felt, it felt fast, but I didn't have much power on the, on the flat section, so popped the seat up and just tried to dig in and go as hard as possible. And, I'm pretty happy with the run, but um, I think the big boys might have a little bit more in the legs today. All right, well, speaking of one of the big boy current world champs, Sam Hill from Australia, now on course, coming back from injury as well, and always has a surprise up his sleeve. A very powerful rider, but again, endurance plays a factor for him, and this is not a track that suits his riding style. He likes the steeper downhills more. Okay, he's already 0.101 back on the leader, so he's got a bit of work cut out for him. The man with the biggest hands in mountain biking on course, and he's not looking as smooth as we've seen him in past, coming towards the bridge section. And the last sprint down towards the finish clears that rock garden nicely. Gets on the pedals, but you can see he is fatigued. Goes into that big bank really nice. Airs it right to the wall on the pedals, trying to get those pedals down. Coming through to the finish line, the last sprint, it doesn't look like he's going to do it. No, he is .590 back, so he will not take over the hot seat. He's got fourth place at the moment. All right, next up, American rider Aaron Gwynn, a new talent, an absolutely young, up-and-coming rider riding for the Trek World Racing Team. Started as an absolute no-name last year, used to ride Supercross, got better and better, and then moved over to Downhill. Looking real smooth on the track here. Great airtime over the tabletop section, clearing them cleanly. In this last little section here, he's looking really good. Wow, look at that. Airs it out right onto the landing and right back onto the pedals, giving it gas. And look at the fitness of this kid. It is incredible as he gets down to this little rhythm section here. A couple of the spectators watching on in the midday heat. Very slippery course. It's dried out quite a lot in this section here. It's still nice and tacky because of the shadows. 
Through the rock garden, Aaron Gwynn looking super here. Split time, my goodness, look at that. He is six seconds faster than the hot seat time. Aaron Gwynn, as I said, the new up and coming talent in downhill mountain biking. Wow, an unbelievable sprint from top to bottom. And this is just a fantastic performance from the young American. If he keeps this speed up, he will take more than one World Cup victory home on this season. Look at this kid go. And this is a peddler's course as well, so we know that he can play on the downhills that are steep. And obviously, he's got the peddler's courses down pat. All right, approaching the finish line here, a little bit of style. Oh, he's going to take it over. No problem for Aaron Gwynn. He absolutely dominates Steve Pete and takes over the hot seat. It was good. Uh, had some mistakes at the top I wasn't super happy with, but pulled it back together, and the pedaling was a lot better, so <laughs> stoked. <laughs> Well, that run will be hard to beat, and that training program and diet are really paying off. Okay, on the track now, French downhill legend, two-time world champion Fabien Borel, who after a long injury break is finally back racing on the World Cup circuit. But he is well back of the split time now, plus three seconds. He still needs to get his legs. He'll have been training hard to get himself back in shape here, but coming back from injury, it's a big deal. Fabien Borel really working hard to try and get himself back in the mix here. Coming down to the last sprint through the finish area, it's definitely not going to be good enough. He is a good four plus seconds back, but he's got second place right now. All right, one of the most fit men on the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup circuit is G. Atherton. The 2010 World Cup champion from Great Britain getting off to a good start. He's super smooth. And look at this through the tabletop section, styling it out, looking very, very nice through this little rock garden set drops. And he is very, very strong on the bike. Another rock garden coming up here. And again, this is such a long course as we check the split time. Ooh, it's a little bit slow for G. He's a second back of Aaron Gwynn at the moment. Getting on the pedals, trying to be as physical on that bike as possible. He's been in New Zealand for a while now, training to try and be ready for this World Cup season. And he's looking good, but this time around, I don't think he's going to take over the top spot. No, he's got second place though, pumping Fabian Borel back a notch with 1.9 seconds back. All right, the man everybody here wants to see win this contest is all the pressure is on this man today. Last year, he finished in the top three at every World Cup event. So he has a lot of expectations put on him today. And he is really pounding those pedals to try and catch up to the time of Aaron Gwynn, who has been the fastest man of the day. Looking real smooth through the tabletop section here and right back on the pedals. And you can see he is just leaning over those bars, pumping hard to try and get every last second he can possibly get out of this course. And the fans here pushing him on as he goes through the rock garden. And the split time not looking so great for Minar. He's plus 103 back. That's not terrible though. Minar's known to come with a big kick at the end of this course here. And he knows this course. This is his home course. So, you know, everybody's cheering him on. They want to see Greg Minar do well. Clears that jump. Oh man, he really flew the last sprint towards the final. Here we go, the last corner, the last sprint, right down to the final, and oh my goodness, is that ever close, 0 0.241. That is the fastest time we've seen behind Aaron Gwynn so far, so Greg Minar's got second at the moment. Well, the fastest qualified rider, Sick Mick Hanna from Australia is on track. Let's see what Greg has to say about his own run. You know, I had a really good run, it was fast up top. Um, made a couple of stupid mistakes, but I felt I still rolled out pretty good. The crowd was awesome up there. Thanks to One Life Crew. Sorry for a second place so long. And a second place it is. While Hannah is still gutted about his broken handlebar, Aaron Gwynn is celebrating his first World Cup victory. It was good. It was, uh, it was definitely on the limit in a few spots. I had to try to chill myself out. I had a couple of wild moments that I was probably glad weren't on film because they were pretty sketchy. But yeah, it was good. I don't know. I, I felt good here all weekend and it was just trying to, I don't know, put it together and put in a good effort on the pedaling. I guess, uh, I don't know. I, I was kind of surprised, but kind of not. I, just, I don't know. I don't know what to say. 
putting his hands in the air for his first World Cup win, American Aaron Gwynn beating Greg Minar, finishing second, and G. Atherton in third. Fabian Borrell with a nice comeback, taking fourth place, and Steve Pete in fifth, also on the podium. Sixth place for Steve Smith, Sam Hill finishing seventh, and Nick Beer taking eighth in the list here as we take a look at the graphic. That was it for the first round of this 2011 UCI Mountain Bike World Cup. Sawabona from Peter Maritzburg. We will return for the second round in the Scottish Highlands of Fort William in the first week of June. See you then.